Now, I'm sure one of the questions you guys have is, Thomas, a lot of the gear that you review, is it really that good? Are you sure you're not being bought off by the companies? Because, you know, you never do any negative reviews. Today, JP dropped by and he spent a few hours with me. You see, I like to share. In real life, I have this passion for music, audio, and whenever I can accommodate, when people ask if they can drop by to listen to my system, sure, drop by and listen to my system. So after spending a few hours with JP today, I figure, you know what? Maybe I should just film a quick video and let them tell you what they think about, you know, a few of the systems that I reviewed recently, or a few of the speakers I reviewed recently. And uh, with that said, so let's get to it. Hey guys, it's Thomas here. Now I'm wearing a mask because I came into contact with somebody who tested positive. So I'm protecting JP here. Thanks. Anyway, so uh, today JP dropped by my place because he wanted to listen to the Sibelius and the Galeon. So I let him listen to the Q Acoustic Concept 500, the Sibelius and the Manapan. And we spent hours listening to it, right? A lot of jazz music. Yes. And I, I figured, you know what? Why don't I just film a video so that JP can share his impression of it, right? So JP, you've been listening to Manapan for how many years? Uh, since 1988. I have them, right. uh, 35 years, the MG1C, and I've tried uh, many, many other speakers, and I'll always come back to the Magnepan. For me, this is it, but yeah. I'll, I can love other speakers in other people's place. Well, in my place, <laughs> that, that's it. So, uh, JP has been looking for a new pair of speakers, right? Because his speaker is like 30 years old and uh, he's having a hard time. As I said, once you go Manapan, it's hard to go s with something else. And uh, that's why from time to time he'll drop by my place, he'll listen, he'll, he'll buy some speakers, bring it home, and he ends up returning them. So he tried Dyn Audio, he tried... Uh, I don't even remember what Grand he did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Spendor, whatever, okay? So, m once you like Manapan sound, you like Manapan sound. So, JP here, hold this. Okay, so tell me, uh, what do you think about the Concept 500 today? With the Galio. The first pair we listened to. Yes. Uh, I saw your video mm -hmm. recently, and uh, I thought it was dull. Mm -hmm. You know, that was uh, that was what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, it was uh, with the Galleon amp. It was bright, lively, nice attack. Uh, w I was at home, like I said at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very good, punchy, and a good sound. Very good. I was impressed. So, yeah, what I described in the video then is true, right? It's not a, a dull sound with the Galeon because Galeon is sharp. So, yeah. it'll, it'll bring out all the details of the Concept 500. Yeah. Tell me about the Sibelius. Okay, uh, did it meet your expectation? You know, I made it sound like one of the most amazing speaker ever. <laughs> you know, were you disappointed? No, I was not because uh, I, I watched your video twice actually mm -hmm. and... Uh, I was really curious. I had to listen to these speakers and I was not disappointed because as soon as you put it after the uh, the 500, mm -hmm. uh, it was so smooth and relaxing. It was so natural. It was impressive in that matter. It was not aggressive at all. Uh, I mean, we put a track. Uh, I listened to it at least a thousand times so far and mm -hmm. I never heard it like that. The keyboard was there. You could locate it. I never heard all these notes detached, so clear, so natural, not fatiguing at all. It was yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, like we discussed, uh, once you listen to those speakers, yeah. it's hard to go back. And you said, what's wrong with those speakers? You have to adjust to adapt back to them. You see, what happens is that after I filmed the Sibelius video, uh, what I did is that, you know, you know, I had to go back to my own speakers, right? And uh, the first thing I noticed when I went back to my own speaker is that, man, these sounds like hi-fi speakers. They don't sound natural and That's real it. anymore, right? That's and it. you had that same feeling today yes. when we changed speakers. You're like, oh my gosh, you know? Yeah. So the bass, how is the bass on the Sibelius? You know that four inch driver, I told everybody that the bass is incredible and nobody believes, well, not nobody, but there are some people who are skeptic, say it's impossible. A four inch driver cannot produce strong, deep bass. What do you think? 
Oh no, there's bass in there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah there's bass. It's round. It's full. You know, it, it fulfilled the belly uh, need. You know, it's it, it's not super fast and detail. You know, which mm -hmm. I don't like because I like uh, the roundness of a bass. Mm -hmm. No, it's fully satisfying. It it's there. You're not lacking any bass with those. Uh, is it really four inch? I think so. I don't know. Four five. Four five. I mean, yeah. who cares? I mean, look at the thing. The thing looks yeah. like a toy, man. Like <laughs> yeah. super small. Yeah, but that's a big, uh, big thing. Eh? It's high, pretty high. That speaker. So I guess it, it comes out at the bottom. Yeah. So it develops. The bass has time to develop inside. So mm -hmm. that that helps. I'm sure it's all planned from that guy there. Yeah, Harley. Uh, yeah, he he made an incredible speaker. Yeah. Now here's the thing with the Sibelius, as I mentioned, right? For me, it can be a bit too smooth sounding. So what we did, we drove it with the Macintosh and the Galion. Now last week, I had somebody come listen to it also, and he preferred the Macintosh because he likes smooth sounding speaker. He doesn't vocal for him is a no go. And after he listened to the Sibelius, he bought it. Like, I mean, he told me he was gonna order one. Yeah. What about you today? Like when, when you listen to the Sibelius, okay, it's a different uh, DAC today. We use something a bit different. Did you prefer it with the Macintosh or with the Galleon? With the Galleon, definitely. Okay, why? Explain. Why? Mm -hmm. uh, first we put the Galleon and it was great uh, for uh, what, 15 minutes, something like that. And then when you switch to the Macintosh, everything became rounder, darker a bit, uh, more bass, a bit more power, but it was less defined, less aerial, if I could say. And the attack was not as sharp and bright as with the Galleon. Mm -hmm. No, definitely the Galleon had, had the edge over the Macintosh. Yeah, that's, for some people it could be too smooth, as I said, the Sibelius, right? So the Galleon in its transparent mode will give you a lot of attack. And uh, Okay, so then we move on to the Manapan 1.7i. What do you think about it? Because he has the mana pans and he was looking for another mana pan to replace it. So what's your impression of the mana pan today? We drove it with the Galleon and we also drove it with the Macintosh. So let's start. What do you think about it? Uh, they did not disappoint me. Although at first I was a bit uh, disoriented because uh, after you listen to the Sibelius, yeah. so natural, I said, oh, what's that? We got to readjust for yeah. a minute or two. I didn't like it, you know, but then uh, as time went in, uh, okay, I felt at home. And when you put the Macintosh, which has uh, more power than the Galleon, mm -hmm. uh, and we cranked the volume, and then my eyes adapted, uh, that was great. I mean, the 1.7i was the first time I listened to them, and it's a great uh, follow up to mine. It's the same Siri kind of, you know, mm -hmm. but 35 years later. I mean, same size. Uh, it's great. It's good. Uh, I would love to compare them side by side with my old one, you know, yeah. just for fun. But even though it's great, can you say that it really beat your mana pan? No. That's how incredible mana pans are, right? Uh, That's right. right. My friend had the 1.7, yeah. not the I. Mm -hmm. uh, they were 12 years old, made in 2009, he bought them in 2010 mm -hmm. and he sold them. But before he sold them, he brought them to my home mm -hmm. and we compared them with my 35-year-old Magnepan and mine had something superior, I, I mm -hmm. don't know what to say. And uh, my friend is very ambitious, he said, no, I want the best. So he bought another pair of Magnepan and in the end he bought an old vintage IMF. Uh, reference mod monitor uh, top of the line but it's a compromise he said you know yeah that's the thing about being in this hobby there's no best as i always say it's a question of taste that's even right. something that's as old as 30 something years for you it can beat the modern speakers yeah so that's why yeah audio is such an interesting hobby yes right. i have a friend a new friend uh, uh, for a year old friend a guy old like me and he said he called me sometimes said GP believe me I tell you one thing you'll never be totally satisfied <laughs> sadly the Sibelius is above JP's budget else he would have bought it all right guys we actually ran out of battery so uh, yeah that's it we'll cut the uh, interview short 
I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video. And if you do, please leave a comment saying, let me know, let me know, right? If you guys like it, every time when somebody drops, drops by, I will ask them to film their reaction. See you next time. Is not defined. Who you can.